So my voice has been cracking. I've had a little trouble the last week, so I hope I can make it through this show. If not, thank goodness, I have a partner with a velvet bassoon voice that is music to everyone's ears. So let's take a turn to the back nine. This is the back nine with Dennis Williams and Josh Mora. Here he is, the guy with the velvet bassoon voice, Josh Mora. That might be the nicest thing you've ever said to me. I knew you cared. I really did. Thank you. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, bud. How are you? Very, very good. It's been a it's been a great season so far. We're having some compelling guests, and your thoughts on where we are in the season? My thought was, it's we've had such great insight, right? And we've touched on a couple of really interesting topics. But I think the most important thing is the idea of that that the people who are in our lives, early in our lives, and sometimes we lose touch with them. But there, you recognize, I think, those moments where somebody special is there, even if they're only there for a brief amount of time. And finding a way to maintain that relationship, even if it goes quiet for two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, if there was a moment at one point, it's important to be able to maintain those relationships or rediscover those relationships. Because if they were important at one point, chances are they're going to be important maybe in a new incarnation at some other point. How about yourself? Well, you never know, right? You never know what you're going to be doing and when you're going to want to talk to somebody or somebody's going to enter your life again that was in it before and why they're going to enter and all of those things. So that's a great segue into our guest, Amanda Carroll. Amanda, I've known you for a while from the Sacramento days. When I was back there, you were working for Salem Radio and great to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. I'm honored. It's good to see you again. (laughs) <laughs> well, anyway, we wanted to tell your story because it is absolutely incredible, a back nine story of resilience. We recognize that you've made a transition. We don't want to age people, but it's front nine, back nine. Back nine is you're probably on hold 10 or something, but because you're so young. But anyway, mm-hmm. we you but on your front nine, you had one of the most challenging things uh, a mother could go through. You were put in the position to be a single mom at a very young age. So so maybe just explain a little bit about the context so we can set up what you're doing now. Yeah, well, life as I know it was supposed to be really easy. I grew up, got married at 22, married the guy I met in college and decided to have babies and do the whole thing. I was kind of working in radio at the time. And when I was 34 years old, I had three children four to an eight weeks old, my third. I had them back to back. And he came home from a business trip one night and just right after I had gone back to work after maternity leave and said, I'm leaving you tonight. And I didn't at all see it coming. I just had our third child. And he, of all the things that I said, I said, well, we're out of milk. It's not a bizarre thing. <laughs> like I wasn't, I, I, like I have now I have a bunch of better things that I could have said sure. in that moment. <laughs> but I, I immediately went to survival mode. I was living in Washington, D.C., and he left, brought back a gallon of milk because I knew I was waking up in the morning. I had to do a morning radio show in D.C., and I had three little kids and no milk. So he brought back the milk and left, and it was over, absolutely mm-hmm. over. And I was working for a Christian radio station at the time. So I was like the good girl in the morning show. And everybody knew I just had a baby. So there was a lot of shame. And I kept it a secret for a long time. And I was a disaster. So they were little, I was just trying to figure out my life again. And I just decided to hatch a plan to get a better life. There had been some abuse in the relationship. And I had kind of dismissed it and then went to therapy and then realized, oh my God, that was actually maybe the best thing that ever happened to me, that he decided to leave like that. That's how I look at it now. So I hatched a plan. I said, you know what, what if I could make what happened the best thing that ever happened to me, even for my career? So I decided to be done dreaming small And I had sidelined my career for his career. He worked for a major oil company and did really well for himself. And she said, well, I'm going to go chase the dream job. I said, I want a national radio show. That's what I want. And called everybody I knew in the business to see if I could land a national radio show and applied for everything. 
And what's funny is, is I picked a date on the calendar. It was like my own personal deadline that I was going to have a new life. And it was a year to the date that he left, August 1st. He left August 1st, 2010. And... I decided by August 1st, 2011, I was going to have a plan. I was going to be out of the house because I knew that's about how much money I had to survive. And I got a job offer for the largest radio network for Christian music ever, K-Love Radio. And they called and said, hey, we want to offer you this great job. And I fell on my knees thanking God. And believe it or not, the woman that does the relocation when you move for a job, she called me and she said, hey, Amanda, we don't really want you to drive across the country from D.C. to Rockland, California in your minivan with three kids in car seats by yourself to move here. So we're thinking it's a lot safer to book you guys a flight and to fly you out here. I know you want to get here before your oldest daughter starts kindergarten. Yes, she was four years old at the time or five. I said, yes, please. And she goes, does August 1st work for you? Wow. I said, absolutely. I mean, I was like a woman, like, I don't even recognize that version of myself anymore. She was so courageous. Like, She's just, I have this picture in my office of me landing at the airport in Sacramento on August 1st, 2011, a year to the date that my ex left and blew up our life. And I was pushing a double stroller and a single stroller both to get three kids under five through the airport by myself just to, and I'm like, I'm here. And I asked a stranger to take the picture and it's blurry, but it's my favorite thing because it's an example to me that you can absolutely reinvent your life if you have enough sheer will to do it. Uh, Amanda, it's a fantastic story. And I don't want to gloss over it before we launch into the next thing. Yeah. it. I, your courage is obvious now, however many years later it is. How did you do that? I mean, it's one thing to say, well, I just decided it would be a year. What steps did you take? Did you manifest? I mean, how did you choose to find whatever therapy, because you mentioned it, that you did, et cetera, et cetera? It's a great question. See if I can remember it all. A lot of it is a blur. I grew up in church. I have a really strong faith, and it's very personal to me. So I knew that there was a good plan for me. Like I had that understanding that everything could get better. And, you know, I think it was my stepdad. He's just recently passed away, but he, I remember him calling me when I was curled up in a ball for a long time. I mean, I was still nursing my baby when I became a single mom and I was so tired. And I remember just laying in bed and just crying and him calling me, he goes, hey, Amanda, just I want you to know that I believe in you and that I want, I think you're going to be the one that shows other moms how to do this. Like he planted the seed for what I'm doing now back then. And I think I had a good community of people around me. I call them cot carriers. Remember that story in the Bible of the four friends that take their paralyzed buddy to Jesus to get healed? I feel like we all need cot carriers in our life. And I leaned on friends and they found me a good therapist. I even had a friend that held my hand with me to go to the attorney's office to do something Mm. I never thought I would do to file for divorce. And I've always loved reading the Bible. And I read Joshua 1, 9. I remember one night. It said, have I not commanded you, declares the Lord, to be strong and courageous, but I'll go with you wherever you go. And I remember it was in the midst of me figuring out what the hell I was going to do. And I remember thinking, oh, crap, it's not an option for me. Like, I I could just cave and I could move back home with my family. They welcomed me. They're like, why don't you come back home? But who wants to go back to central Illinois? Not me. So they said... (laughs) why don't you just come back home? And I was like, no, I am commanded to be strong and courageous and my three kids need me. And I know there there was one more moment that really changed everything that made me realize I had to get out of bed and do something. Cause I'm not, this was not instant. I was a disaster for a while. I, my daughter, Emily, who's a senior in high school now, she's graduating this year, but she was just four years old. And this happiest, bubbliest little girl. And whenever it was sunny outside, she would say, it's happy. 
mommy, it's happy outside. She So every single morning, she would open up her curtains in her room. And if it was sunny, that means she could play outside. So I was laying in bed and I had been crying all night. And I heard her get up and I heard her open up her curtains. And she said, mommy, it's happy outside. And I thought, crap. <laughs> like, I have to be happy for these kids. I think if I hadn't have had my three children, I don't think I would have had the same outcome because I had to figure it out because I was the right. only one that they had. And it's, that's why I call them, I nickname them the sunshines because they make me happy oh, when cool. skies that's are great. gray. Are eight, what are their ages now? Just so, so our audience has perspective on how far uh, you've come. 17, 15, and 13. Right. So that's mm -hmm. so, so now we're fast forwarding into your life. Now you yeah. worked in, in the broadcast radio business for a while, yeah. uh, but now you've mm -hmm. taken all your experiences, all your experiences over the last decade plus since that all happened. Yeah. And uh, you are sharing your story with so many single moms out there. I mean, you are doing you are doing such good work for so many people. And maybe you could talk about that and how you've taken transition from all of that heartache and difficulty and turned it into this amazing career of helping people. Thanks. I love it. It's what I've always wanted to do. And I finally got the guts to freaking do it. Like I, 2020 was weird and broadcasting was weird. And I was working for a really conservative organization and it just got weird to be a woman in that organization. And I just decided I, 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 I want to do something better. And the syndicated show ended December 2022. And I realized, well, I got to figure out something to do. So I came up with these ideas and I was like, why don't I do the thing that my stepdad told me that I was going to be doing a decade ago? And I had been interested in online courses and how do I take my skills in broadcasting to do encouragement on a different level that's not in radio, not in television and experimenting with it. And I finally, it became a must for me to be able to start my own business. So I developed something I call the metamorphosis method, which is the step-by-step -step goal setting program to help single moms reinvent their life when the rug gets pulled out from underneath them. And it's bravesinglemoms.com. And it goes back to that Joshua 1.9. For have I not commanded you, declares the Lord, to be strong and courageous? And he says, but I'll go with you wherever you go. So I created what I call the gospel of with, because we can be strong and courageous when we're with each other. Because so many of us isolate and there's so much shame with single motherhood. And I didn't want to create some, you know, those digital courses, you buy something and you just watch a bunch of videos. I didn't want to do that. So I wanted to create something that we do together. So there's a community of brave single moms that we meet together several times a week. And we go through the metamorphosis program that teaches moms how to create a vision and a mission for their life. And just like we're a corporation, why not have the one for us? Like, why not build our resume for life? And we create... SMART goals, four SMART quarterly goals. Where do you want to be a year from now? And we break it down in small steps. And then we talk about how to peacefully co-parent, how to manage your finances without relying on child support, because most of the time it's completely unreliable and 100% of the time it always goes away. So what are we going to do? And we also come up with how to date again and how to heal yourself. And it's I've had over 100 moms go through the program in less than a year. Fantastic. It's 12 weeks and it is my absolute passion. I, it's funny because I had this little Instagram and it was just stuff for my radio. And I was like, it's not growing. It's not growing. Because I think it was because I was being somebody I really wasn't. I wasn't very authentic on there. I had to play the, I call her the Amanda Carroll radio role. <laughs> I was playing a character of myself. And then as soon as I became very authentic, I grew from 2000 followers to almost 11,000 in six months because I just started saying, Hey, I'm, I'm here to help single moms. So it, it is the most fulfilling work I've ever done. And now what's great is through the program, 
single moms now have the ability to become coaches themselves. So I teach them how to coach other single moms and so they can generate revenue and have their own business for themselves. We'll be right back. If you need a benefit auctioneer for your next fundraising gala, hire Eric Goodman, who's broken fundraising records all over the country. Josh and I have known Eric for over 30 years, and he's one of the most passionate, energetic, and hardworking people we know. Eric's consulting strategies and successful fundraising techniques is why he raised a million dollars in 10 minutes at a recent event. Visit yourfundraisingteam.com to see a video of his work, testimonials, and then book with Eric today so your nonprofit can have a record-breaking night. So I've mentioned Three Bridges Consulting. What they do is they market your company. They lead the creative, they find the audience. What they produce, commercials, social media content, possibly even documentaries, it's long form, it's short form. One recent success story, working with a home services company in Chicago, a company that refaces cabinets. They launched a campaign in January. They had five times the revenue of their previous January and a million dollars more in revenue than in any prior month after they launched this campaign. Once again, it's Three Bridges Consulting. The number three, bridgesconsulting.co. All right, back to the show. Amanda, what are, there, it, it, I can, you, you've so drawn a picture there that I can see women who are at some of their lowest moments becoming healthy and healed again, and what a gift that is to the world. What are the roles that men can play in this journey and and it might just be stand back right. and let the women heal. I mean, that which is a perfectly fine answer. But what have you seen over the course of your time building out this new venture? Man, that's good. Question back at you when you ask, okay, okay what are the roles that men can be? Men as far as the co-parent that they're co-parenting with or men as far as just general, like how can we support single moms? Yeah, I, I suppose I, I hadn't both. thought yeah, both yeah. really, but I, I guess if you're going to focus yeah. on one, it's I think it's the second one. I mean, it, co-parenting yeah. is, is a separate question from yeah. we, you're helping Got women it. who are in this situation. How do men do the same? Oh, gosh, believe in us. I think that was one of the things that was the most that was a game changer for me is my stepdad believing in me and empowering me. Give us promotions. <laughs> give us jobs. Don't look at hiring. I always say, I think single moms are a fantastic hire because we're incredible multitaskers <laughs> and we get jobs done yeah. really quick so we can get out of work to get, pick up our kids. I think also just support and encouragement. I think, you know, what came to mind is I'm newly remarried. Don't ask me marriage advice. I've been married a whole three months. So I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. And I knew the difference with Sean, my husband, of, of he came along as a supporter and not as someone that was wanting to take anything, it felt like. But, you know, that man bought a new car and then bought a license plate cover for his car that he drives around that he made that says bravesinglemoms.com on it, on his car. And I think it's a little thing, but it is just a beautiful example of, he's like, I'm going to not ever get in the way of her goals, but I'm going to come alongside and I'm going to do everything I can to help her be successful. What kind of support do you need? And never did he ever say when I was like, so I'm not really going to like work for anybody anymore. <laughs> And I'm going to start this whole coaching business and do a coaching program and launch this and kind of live off my savings for a little bit. Never did he say, you're crazy. Why would you do that? He said, how can I help? Like, I'm all in. I believe in you. I think that's how oh, that's the first thing that came to answer. Otherwise, I'm not sure how it's. No. I think that's absolutely right. I think on the back okay. nine, what you're looking for in a companion is somebody who supports yeah. you and supports your dreams, supports you and supports yeah. what drives you and makes you passionate. Because we spend a lot of, maybe some people are lucky enough to find their dream at 22, but most of us don't. Most of us are, are searching for that, right? And if we have the, if, if we're brave enough, like you were, I love that word, mm -hmm. if we're brave enough to go after it, you have to have that support. 
if you don't, if you're, if and I, my term is start it yes, right? If you have the start it no people yeah. in your life, then you're in trouble. And apparently, obviously, Sean is a start it yes guy, which is how I live my life completely now. It took me a long time to yeah. get there, but you have to have that person in your life. And and that's and I, I think if I was going to say to guys out there what you need yeah. to be, it, it's that it's a start it yes. I love that. It's the support. Yeah. And then I don't know about you, but it's like for to know that just to know that I have that. It's really just the knowing of. I knew even by saying that I had no fear of telling him we're in a relationship for like two years and I had no fear at all of saying, so I want to do this crazy thing. I knew already that he was going to support right. me in doing the crazy thing, which gave me the guts to do the thing that has changed everything for us. So bringing it back to you, Amanda, what is it like to ha feel like you have found your calling, right? I mean, I think we know that mo there, there are moments where we sense things are not quite right. And, and sometimes we find it in a relationship. We know that person is right at, for this time. But to be, I've experienced this a little bit too, the, the idea that you're in a space where you feel like, man, this is what I was always meant to do. You are certainly emitting that energy right now. Yeah. God. I, I don't think I've ever been happier in my life. I'm almost 40, maybe 48 next week. And I think I've, I finally feel like I am able to make the difference I was always designed to do. And I probably work seven days a week, a little bit at a time, because it doesn't feel like work to me at all it and it, it feels like legacy that's the word that I talk to my kids a, about a lot is what kind of a legacy how do you want people to remember you and even what I teach my single moms like I want to have a legacy that people will say when my name comes up they'll be like you know what there's a person that did some good because it doesn't even matter how much money you have like I remember thinking about this when Kobe Bryant passed away. I did a thing on the air about it. Noticed that, you know, like that, he was a wealthy man, but when he passed away, nobody really talked about his net worth. Everybody yeah. talked about how good of a guy he was, and how he helped other people, and the everybody had stories. And to me, that that's the most satisfying thing in life. I don't need big fancy vacations. I don't need big fancy cars or anything like that, but to everything. And when I get a text from a single mom, I had one the other day that said, she's not even in my program. She just listened to one of our podcasts, the Brave Single Mom podcast. She said, she's like, hey, I listened to your episode about circling a date on the calendar and setting a goal. And I circled a date to get my own apartment. And she goes, and, and I did it. And my daughter and I just moved in. And she's never, ever lived on her own before. She went straight from her father and mother's house to living with her husband and then got divorced and went back. And I said, there you go. Like my mic drop, I'm good. It's just That's great. That's great. Before we let you go, why don't you um, give us a, a little bit of just how people can reach out to you? We do have women who listen to this show and and and, and may want to connect with you and listen to your podcast. Yeah. Give us the rundown about your podcast and how people can connect with you. Great. Podcast is in all the podcast places. Brave Single Moms, if you look at that, bravesinglemoms.com is the website. The place you can find me the most and just send me a DM, I'm on it all the time, is Instagram at the real Amanda Carroll, two R's and two L's. You can find me there and I'll send you messages and chat. Ask me anything if you want to reach out, if you're going through a transition in your life. If uh, you're a single mom, especially like I, I tell you, I've been through most of the stuff. So I always say right. pretty much I'm your cautionary tale. Ask me what to do and I'll tell you all the dumb stuff that I did so that you can avoid it. <laughs> And then one last thing. So we'll tell this story real quick. So so my buddy Josh <laughs> here told me a while ago when I would, because we used to talk about all this stuff, right, during dating and everything else. And I go, I go, mm -hmm. man, I've never dated anyone that I could ever talk to again. I, I think I'm like emotionally immature. Like I can't be friends with them. It's like high school stuff. You break up and you're mad at them and you're never going to talk to them. I don't know. It just seemed like it was always not, like it was always just 
never friends again. Like it was, that's it. and this is a person you were friends with. So it's just, he's like, here's what's going to happen. He goes, when you start having mature dating and all of this kind of stuff, you are going to end up having a, a couple that don't work out and you're going to stay friends with them. I'm like, really? That can happen? Really? <laughs> and sure enough, it did. Cause Amanda and I had a brief little dating time and, and here we are. Yeah. So, so I, I feel like you, the other thing he told me is that a lot of those girls, he was the last one that they dated before before they got married. So he didn't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> no, I didn't know. I always thought that was a good thing. I always I was I wasn't in a position to be to want to get married at that time and I was like I what an honor, you know that 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 somehow the relationship led to them being confident enough that they felt good in maybe I shouldn't have felt that way. I don't know. Maybe you guys see you something know, I did. That's a really but, nice uh, thought. That's a super nice thought. You're right. Like, hey, I didn't dan like I just I didn't damage anybody. I just like, hey, we're good. Maybe and- help them even, right? Help them get their confidence back a little bit. Right. And now <laughs> I'm engaged too after that. And you're married. So it all worked out. Yeah. And here we are on a podcast as friends talking. And I, I just I just I had to bring a little humor in there. But you, what you're doing, Amanda, is so oh, incredible. Phenomenal. And I'm so proud of you because I do remember when we were chatting many times about what you want to do. You've always wanted to do this. The podcast studio at home, the whole nine yards. I saw the early stages of this and and just couldn't be more proud of a friend accomplishing her dreams. And congratulations on being married and those beautiful kids. So good luck to you. Thank you. Send grocery store gift cards. Now we have a blended family of five teenagers. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, you need those for sure. (laughs) Great to see you, Amanda. All right. Thanks so much, Amanda. You guys are the best. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. So someone needs to get a spatula and just scoop me off the floor because I am blown away by that. Completely knocked over by her. Yeah, she's pretty remarkable, right? And just when you talk about a story of resilience and knowing your calling and then figuring it out and then getting there and manifesting. I mean, you talk about that all the time. It's I don't even know what she even said. She didn't even know she was doing it. But a lot of that is just manifesting your goals and your dreams and knowing and having the confidence you're going to get there. I mean... It's incredible. There had to be moments. And time makes you forget some of those moments. There had to have been moments, dark moments that she doesn't even focus on anymore. Right. She focuses on the moments of, of resilience and getting her back on her feet and getting knocked down and back up. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, two points on that. Number one, there are a lot of tools out there for people who want to manifest more, more than I think ever before I see them available. And so if that's something that you want to do, I do that practice. I'm actually in a 21 day manifesting challenge as we speak. Wow. And it's amazing how things happen. Yeah. So there are tools out there. It's not through us other than for us to say, hey, go look at that if that's something you're interested in. But to your point about her, she fortunately had a stepfather, someone to lean on, who of his own direction said, I believe in you. And I think that's a hard, it's amazing that she had that. What a, I'm amazed at that at him. And unfortunately, he just passed away, I think she said. Yeah. There are people, in this case, women who have been left. But I think it's in a lot of situations, people who have lost their job suddenly or are blindsided by something in life who either have never believed that or don't have that faith in the universe or in themselves or in her case, in God, whatever, however you want to phrase it. To be able to do that. And it's important. My takeaway is there's one thing an audience member takes away from this is that no matter what happens to you, you can recover. You, there, there's lots. It may take some time. It's going to take healing. It may take actual therapy, but you can. The pain is temporary. I think the other thing is as dark as certain things get, people get in dark places. Imagine her with three kids under four going through an airport all in strollers trying to get them across the country from Washington to Sacramento. I mean, and then start a new life. Like, like that is mind blowing strength. Yeah. Yeah. Mind blowing strength. So we all have it in us. If you haven't read David Goggins book, he always says at our best, we achieve about 40% of what we're capable of. His mindset is at peak level, most people maybe get to 40% of what they're capable of. And he's, David Goggins has pushed himself beyond all, <laughs> anything you could possibly imagine. He's at another level. But that's just the point. The point is you can always push harder. You can always do more. 
And I think that's what she did. And that's why she's living her dream now. Absolutely. And right. And she feels very aligned with that purpose, happier than ever, every day, regardless of what the weather is. She's now opening the curtains and saying today is a happy day. Yeah. Well, we were so ha happy to have her. Happy to do another show with you, my friend. These keep building and building and building like our consciousness and the depth of, of this show was pretty profound. So we'll see you next time on The Back Nine. Thanks for teeing it up with Josh and me on The Back Nine podcast. We would be eternally grateful if you could download and follow us on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcast, and leave a five-star rating. The Back Nine is meticulously curated by Janine Stella and recorded at Pixelwork Studios in Delray Beach, Florida.